And now, Dr. Oladoin Odubanjo, Executive Secretary, Nigeria Academy of Science, joins us live via Skype to have a conversation. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. Good to have you. And can you briefly update us on the ongoing scientific research as we get to the evolution of COVID-19 and maybe some of the findings related to it? Well, um, it, it's good you are pointing at research because that's one of the things we think it is less talked about in Africa as a whole and, of course, indeed in Nigeria as well. Um, there's a lot of questions being asked, uh, being a novel virus, um, which is where did it even come from? Many people don't know that that's still not asserted. That's not something that is pretty clear. Uh, the acceptable narrative, the closest right now, is that it came from a market in Wuhan from bats to a, an intermediate host before infecting humans. But all those things are not uh, confirmed or concluded, as it were, and still need to be researched into. And then that also tells us that many other things that are following up from uh, treatment to prevention need to be researched. Even the question of what is going on in Africa. Uh, is, it, is it a different virus? Is it a mutated virus? Is it the immunity of Africans that is giving us a different picture? Um, or is it that we've not tested enough? Those are all questions that are worthy of research. Hmm. So far, I think the key research that's going on is to figure out treatment, you know, uh, and that's understandable, which is that everybody first and foremost is worried about controlling the outbreak first. Um, and if a fire, if a house is on fire, you want to put out the fire first before you start dealing with what caused the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's understandable. And that, that is starting, for instance, in Lagos. Lagos looking into the chloroquine treatment as purported. Um, it's also sad that the DG of NAFTA did comment some days ago uh, that most states were, didn't even show interest, mm -hmm. you know, in contributing to that research. Hmm. and participating in it. And that brings us to our next question, Doctor. Does it bother you that there is no cure for COVID-19 yet? And is there any chance that this would happen anytime soon from the research going on? I absolutely believe that, yes, we will come to um, conclusion as to the treatment pretty soon, sooner rather than later. Uh, the truth of the matter is that there are many things that have already been suggested as showing promise. Uh, many people have faulted some of those things to say they've not followed certain uh, research methodologies. However, they have given us an insight that I think is rich enough, and I think every single day new information is coming out. The pathophysiology, that is, how does this disease really work in the human body? What does it really do? And once you can understand that, recall also that in Nigeria, even in Nigeria, we did do the genome sequencing. So once you know what the uh, organism looks like, even down to the genetic level, we are beginning to get better insight into how the organism works and destroys the body and causes the disease that we see. Uh, once all of those things are becoming more apparent, as we are seeing day by day, uh, then the answer is close by. All right, let's talk about the invitation of the Chinese doctors uh, to Nigeria. There's been controversy uh, about that visit. Do you think that this would make any significant impact, that is, the coming of this uh, Chinese doctor into the country? The sad truth is no. And uh, my reason for saying that is that if, for them to make an impact, you need them to work with their um, colleagues, uh, health workers in Nigeria, and as we all already know, they, there is already a lot of discord in that area. It is sad that we have, we have failed to carry along the different of uh, nurses, medical lab workers, and of course, quite prominently, we've been hearing the Nigerian Medical Association, uh, they are not in support. Uh, but you can always learn from other people. You know, that's the truth of the matter. And the truth is that the doctors, the nurses, everybody knows that that there's always some value in interaction with people, and especially with people who have dealt with a disease you have not dealt with before, and they have dealt with it in the thousands. So they've seen many patients, so we can learn from them. However, if you fail to carry those stakeholders along, who exactly are these Chinese experts going to be discussed with? You know, and how is this going to help us, therefore? 
So I think we've, we've made a fundamental mistake in not carrying along the critical stakeholders in the country and therefore making it possible now that, in fact, it might work against us as it is. Now, so what are your recommendations, you know, regarding this? Well, I, I think it's never too late to send an apology. Um, what we have been seeing is a lot of changes in the stories, on the storyline. What we should do is that this is not the time to pull out swords, but to cheat the swords and apologize where necessary and say, yes, we realize that we made an error in not talking to all the critical stakeholders we should be talking to. So please come, let's talk, and let's make the best out of the situation, all the same. So I, I think it's always possible. I think the, the health workers are very reasonable in this country because they've also been working under very terrible circumstances for many years. Uh, I think they've been very reasonable, and therefore I think that this can all be resolved amicably if it's approached right. Mm. Thank you so very much, Dr. Odubanjo, for joining us this afternoon and for sharing your insights there. My pleasure. Okay.